I will not torture people with music. One, two, three. Yes, we are live for another global podcast editors chats and we've got some wonderful podcast editors with us today. I'm going to give you a quick introduction and then we're going to dive into our four individual challenges, talk through them, hopefully help each other out and address questions and comments and things that come up in the chat room, which a few of you are already in. Sweet. So a quick introduction to this event and to the Global Podcast Editors community is due. <laughs> I'm feeling so official today. So every two weeks, we come onto YouTube and onto Facebook, and we talk about the challenges that we're having as podcast editors. Some of us are freelancers, some of us have small businesses, and some of us are kind of between the two. <laughs> um, but there is also a newsletter that is attached to this community, as well as a Google group where we share jobs and cheer each other on and, and talk about anything that we need to to push through and do well in our podcast editing life, which is often far too isolating, which is a huge part of why we're here, so that we can see and talk to each other and not feel like we are completely alone. Uh, da -da -da -da, checking the notes <laughs> so I don't miss anything. I think that's it for the intro. Now we're going to go around and meet the wonderful editors that are in our chat today. We've decided to go counterclockwise because we're feeling a bit rebellious. Jesse, can you start us off? I'm Jesse. I'm with Tansy Astor Audio. And are we talking about the challenges right now? Mm -mm. Or nope, just, just a quick introduction. That's about it. I'm with Tansy Aster Audio, part mm -hmm. of Tansy Aster Creative, and about to launch a course for podcast editing. Awesome. And Jesse? Sorry, Sam? Okay. Uh, I'm Sam. Uh, I've been an audio editor for uh, 15 years, and now I, I edit uh, like almost only podcasts and since uh, September, so almost one year. And yeah, so yeah. Fantastic, and I forgot to do locations. Can we backtrack? Oh, look, to, yeah. Jesse, where are you located? I'm in just north of Vancouver, Washington, which most people don't know where that is. It's on the south end of Washington just over the river north of Portland. Gotcha. And Sam? Uh, I'm in Curitiba, Brazil. And Kim? Hi. Yes, I'm actually in Boston, Massachusetts. And I started actually podcast management in 2020. But I've had this for quite a long time in my life. My husband is a musician. So we've had, uh, I think it was acid rock music on our computers for a long time. Nice. So, um, you know, in 2020, when I didn't want to do the day job anymore, I decided what's on my resume I can work on. And mm -hmm. this came up. And so I've had really great success with uh, doing this ever since. So I'm loving it. Yeah. Fantastic. And I'm an American expat currently in Valencia, Spain. That may or may not change next month. I mean, it will change, but there's a question mark as to where. Dun, dun, dun. Subscribe to the newsletter for more information. <laughs> How's that for cheesy? All right. Oh, wait, I'm not Kim. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm playing with more of the bells and whistles on StreamYard, so if you see something goofy, it's because experiments, you know, sometimes take a while to get used to things. All right, so let's dive into my favorite part. Oh, wait, shoot, my introduction. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm still recovering from COVID weeks later. My brain is doing all kinds of crazy things. Um, yes, I am an editor. I started out as a creator, moved on to podcast editor, and I run the global podcast editors community, including... Uh, write the ridiculously long newsletter and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's dive into the challenges. Those are the, those are the fun bits. If you're in the chat room, please do say hello so we know you're there. And if you have any questions at any point, go ahead and add them. We'll bring them in uh, as organically as we can. And of course, please do remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the things that we're doing on this channel. We have these chats and other tutorials and our imposter syndrome series, and we're adding on things all the time. 
Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. What is your biggest challenge lately? Right now, it's trying to figure out how to diversify my income stream so I'm not mm -hmm. only reliant on production work. That's kind of what led me to think about starting a course and trying to find ways to diversify so that I have different revenue streams. Because if something comes up like an economy in crisis, people might stop looking to hire, they might stop paying for podcast editing services. I need other ways to be able to bring in income in mm -hmm. those types of times. Yeah, I feel that definitely. Yeah. And I think part of that comes from my wife working in graphic design for a long time, mm -hmm. 15, 20 years ago, and seeing how that became so devalued over time that you don't want to put all of your eggs in one creative basket because technology, yeah. different ways of doing mm -hmm. business can all become something you couldn't anticipate happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right, and this gets personal really quick, so please feel free not to answer any of the questions, but what what kind of income streams do you have now? Right it's now, it's, I've got podcast editing, I have coaching, I'm doing some freelance video editing for nonprofits, I'm about to launch a course, and I've been thinking about a way to create a community that's mm -hmm. kind of another way to bring people together and teach mm -hmm. okay and what well let's bring in the crew sam kim do you guys have multiple streams or are you focused on doing one thing yeah. i actually was did have multiple streams mm -hmm. and i want to say in may of this year i actually got rid of the other two that I had mm -hmm. because I wanted to focus more on the podcast management side mm -hmm. and trying to grow that as an agency. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I decided at that time that I needed, I couldn't spread myself that thin. I was just way too thin for it because they, my other options or my other income streams didn't have anything to do with podcasting. So mm -hmm. it, it was just too difficult to do multiple, but I do see the, see the, see where he needs to go. And I do mm -hmm. see that I need to move in a different direction as well. But uh, it just, for right now, I scaled back to just podcasting. So yeah. 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 Well, podcast managers do so much within that yeah. role anyway. So it's almost, it's almost like having the ability to do multiple streams within the one role. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And one of the other reasons I wanted to diversify is when all you do is production work, if you have a mm -hmm. bunch of weekly clients, it becomes much more of a challenge to mm -hmm. get that work-life balance, be able to take time off for trips. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the big things my wife and I talked about when we started, when we went into self-employment, is we wanted to have that flexibility. After the mm -hmm. first year of doing all production work, when we reviewed the year, it's like, okay, we're missing out on that work-life balance yeah. and that flexibility. Yeah. How can we, how can we address that? So we're still making the money we need to survive, but also having flexibility yeah. and yeah. trying to make us so we're not entirely reliant on production income was mm -hmm. the biggest thing we saw. That I actually... Sense. I, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, I feel that really hard because my ex, my husband actually has yesterday, today and tomorrow off. So I worked all last weekend oh. up until late Tuesday night. And then I'm kind of doing a few things in between just so I can have some time off with him. So I really feel that mm -hmm. it, totally. I understand that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I want to know why everybody's obsessed with publishing on Tuesday and Wednesday. I mean, I know it's an industry thing where everybody says more people listen on Tuesday and Wednesday. But if there are more podcasts coming out on different days, they would listen on Thursday, Friday and Saturday, <laughs> or at least Thursday and Friday. So there's this, this rush for me on like Monday night and Tuesday morning where it's like, hurry up because everybody's late with their stuff. Yeah. And yeah, 
Yeah, I, I have to do. Okay, oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, I actually just took on a launch client and uh, I convinced her to release on Thursdays. Thank just you. Because I have too many on Mondays <laughs> and Tuesdays. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And if they were weeks ahead of time, it wouldn't be a big problem. But I mean, I don't have any of those unicorn clients. Um, so I have to do a big shout out to Steve Stewart, <laughs> who's who's resonating with the, the what I just, the client. Tuesday, Wednesday thing. Um, so Steve Stewart's in the chat room, as is Laura Davis, Daniel from My Fluent Podcast, and Sammy from Pod People. Holy cow. Thank you all for being in the chat room. Sam, how about you? How diversified are you? Oh, so um, I'm just celebrating that I went from uh, no stream at all to uh, one. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, for now, I'm just uh, editing as a freelance or contractor. And, but I, I mean, I, I know how important this is and I do want to uh, diversify. But yeah, for, for now, uh, I am uh, trying to uh, feel this, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, kind of success because uh, 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 yeah I, I, I'm coming from some difficult times and yeah. uh, I'm just I'm just trying to uh, 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 take this year to to uh, be okay with it and then I'll start to uh, 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 I, I don't know like uh, diver diversify mm -hmm. and but I, I, I'm going with um, almost the, the same as Jesse. Um, like, I mean, I, I, I don't want to uh, to have like, not that I don't want, I'm not looking for getting any revenue from uh, teaching, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. I, what I'm trying to, to, to think about is like accepting donations, doing mm -hmm. it for free and accepting donations from anyone who will uh, get any benefit from it. Right. And, but yeah, right now uh, I'm, I'm one step behind. No, and it's, it, this is the thing I like about this space is that there's so many different ways to do it. There isn't the correct way. We don't have to be on the same page at the same time. I'm diversified in my business or my freelancing, depending on the day, what I call it, because I started all of this at the beginning of the pandemic as an accident while I was looking for a full-time job when there was a giant job freeze so I just started doing anything I could find and it kind of turned into multiple streams of income uh, all within podcasting, but still it just, it happened accidentally. Um, so there, I don't think there is a correct way or a right way, or we have to be on the same page. I think that's kind of the beauty of the space, but I have to backtrack for a second because I actually read Steve Stewart's message wrong. I thought he was agreeing that Tuesdays and Wednesdays were hectic, but he said most of his clients, it, he says, because this is going to be in podcast form, so I'll read it. He says, I wish more of my clients release on Tuesday or Wednesday. 45% of my clients release on Monday, which makes Thursday and Friday very busy days for me. That's harsh. I'm suddenly very grateful that I don't have Monday releasers. <laughs> I don't have a Monday releaser either. That's, yeah. Yeah. And on that same page, Laura said, we did Thursday release and I affirm everything you're saying made the workflow so much better, but the work-life balance is still so hard. It is really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. So Jesse, we need to give you some ideas. On, do we need to give you ideas? How do we help you through this? I think just discussing it is help enough. Okay. It's so just more a matter of me implementing everything right now. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And but if anybody when, has ideas, I'm always open. So do you want to diversify them in a way that's only in podcasting? Or do you want to branch out to other things? I'm open to other things. <laughs> but it makes it easier from a branding perspective to yeah. tie everything back. 
Mm -hmm. Me and my wife are trying to focus on creative works mm -hmm. and working with nonprofits and kind of businesses, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs with causes. So we're trying to tie everything into that. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Ideas? <laughs> I, I, I don't know if this is like uh, diverse enough, but um, ha have you thought about like um, not only doing podcasts for uh, companies or but like those, um, how can I say this, those like I'm talking about uh, some sort of big companies mm -hmm. or uh, something that maybe only the the uh, workers will listen to like um, a private podcast for for those companies or I don't know I have heard of that a newsletter internal yeah. pod mm -hmm, kind yeah. of internal yeah. podcasting yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely some... something I've thought about. But sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. I, I, I'm just, I, I just know that, uh, that some hosts uh, allow this kind of podcasting. And uh, I sometimes I, I, I was like uh, trying to think about how to use this or mm -hmm. like other than uh, Patreon releases mm -hmm. or anything like this uh, and I I keep thinking about this company thing or uh, yeah so I don't know if there's a lot of ways to... that internal podcasting can be utilized mm -hmm. most companies that I've spoken to aren't really I guess forward thinking enough to really see it how you can replace like a company newsletter with a podcast you can use it for onboarding you can use it for training materials mm -hmm. so where people can listen to it and get more engagement that way. But mm -hmm. I've read that there are companies that do use that, but the mm -hmm. places I've spoken to, they're kind of stuck in their ways of, well, this is how we've always done it. We do just, we take our time out. We have somebody stand in front of classroom, do training that way instead of, recording all of this so it's on demand you free up a ton of time from mm -hmm. from a manpower perspective and that's what i was thinking since you're going towards more of the passive income you know the stuff that takes a ton of time to create and then you have passive income like you're doing the course and whatnot i saw the most brilliant thing today that i think you could probably replicate on some level with using different parts of your course if you if you wanted to um, to maybe diversify or at least repurpose content. Um, I was on Gordon Firemark's uh, legal website. He has all these templates for podcasters on different legal aspects of their of their podcasting stuff. Uh, anything from like an advertiser's agreement to a subcontractor agreement, a co-host agreement, all these, these different things. Some of them are free. Some of them are paid. And he has them all sectioned off. For, I think there were almost 10 now. Like he used to just have one free one, like a free consent form that he would give folks. And now there's like so many. Like, is there anything like that you can do with your course where you can repurpose it kind of a la carte as well and create more passive income that way? That's definitely something in mm -hmm. the pipeline. I haven't had the opportunity to yeah. put a whole lot of thought into what that might look like. But yeah, there's definitely there's a lack of content for podcast audio. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a big need for that. It's just a matter of figuring out the best way to present that to everybody out there. For sure. For sure. All right. Well, let's, let's move on to Sam. Sam, what is your biggest challenge these days? What's going on? Okay. Uh, so for this past two weeks, I guess, uh, my uh, biggest challenge is time management because <laughs> uh, I was most fortunate to land uh, three clients last month and uh, I, I have to say that uh, two of them 
uh, because of the uh, GP uh, newsletter and and the the community in, in the uh, Google group. And uh, yeah, so what uh, I'm struggling is uh, how how to uh, prioritize mm -hmm. a, a, maybe a client or a, a specific editing job mm -hmm. and how how to manage them uh, through my day so what i've been doing i i started using uh this app called uh toggle mm -hmm. and yep. uh i'm, I'm um, tracking my uh hours uh, work hours within mm -hmm. it and I'm I'm trying to to focus more on uh, scheduling, mm -hmm. uh, trying to, but it's very difficult to to follow mm -hmm. this because maybe uh, I took a little uh, less time for doing one task or more time or mm -hmm. maybe I get involved in uh, email answering and uh, this uh, sort of things and uh, or. Slack communication and yeah, so time management for sure. Uh, oh, that's a sticky one. Yeah. Do you know, do you have an idea at this point what or how long each task basically takes you? Okay, so it's very difficult because okay. uh, I'm not only editing podcasts right now, yeah. I got this. Uh, uh, app to 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 work with mm -hmm. and maybe they have like uh, those really short audio clips or 15 minutes or mm -hmm. anything uh above that and uh they they have like uh different uh things so, and uh i have this uh, video editing uh as well freelancing as well so they vary uh like from one to to the other mm -hmm. and so maybe one and a half to two hours for uh regular podcast editing mm -hmm. uh, up to uh, 50 minutes or so and uh but s sometimes it takes days for this app Thing. so yeah I'm, I'm trying to to you get a couple of eggs understand. in your basket yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and that's it's really hard at first until you get into a rhythm with the with each client to know how much things are going or how long things are going to take so Kim how do you deal with time management so I just actually have a question for Sam I, you said that some of your clients are pretty new to you right now. Is that correct? Yeah. So I actually think that it's one, it's definitely going to get easier because you really get to learn your client's voice, how they talk, how, what their cadence is, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, you get that one client, she's always saying, right. Or, you know, and you already know that. So I definitely think that you're on the right path. And I actually keep track of all of mine in Toggle too. I love that. So, and now that I've actually, I only started that in January of this year and going mm -hmm. back and looking at the stats of each one and how long they are is amazing to see. So I love that. So kudos to you for, for starting that and getting that going. Cause yeah, that's awesome. But okay. as far as yeah, time management, I think it's just a matter <laughs> of, well, for me, it's just a matter of putting my nose to the grind and going, mm -hmm. but um, I'm a human design projector, so I can just keep going and going and going as far as that. So um, <laughs> I don't, I, and what, but when I need to take a time off, I take time off. But for, for the most part, I just go until, until my husband peels me away from the screen. <laughs> 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 but I'm um, also an empty nester, so that helps too. <laughs> oh, May wow. I ask you something, uh, Kim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you keep track like on ad administrative tasks, like uh, uh, answering emails or uh, 
looking for other uh, jobs or mm -hmm. uh, clients or anything like this? Yeah, I actually uh, usually reserve for looking for new clients. I usually reserve one day just to that. So any kind of wow. bookkeeping, any kind of like contract writing or anything like that, I usually try to reserve that to just one day so that um, I'm not worried that I have a podcast I need to edit or produce or anything. And then I can, I can really focus on my own business that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I that I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish. I was just going to say I, that is uh, that I actually learned from being um, a website designer before this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it was definitely you had to you had to do that or you wouldn't get your next client, you know. So, mm -hmm. Sorry, Jesse, go ahead. Yeah, I completely agree. One of the things I don't see enough talk about is the amount of time you have to spend investing in the business. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when we were starting out, I talked to some people that are business consultants and they recommend 20, 25% of your time should mm -hmm. be spent in unbillable stuff, your admin yep. stuff, communications, bookkeeping, marketing, lead development, oh, yeah. all of these things. Because if you're working full time on client work, you don't have anything left to give to try and build mm -hmm. and develop your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. and, that makes so much sense. Um, for me, I use a bunch of different tools to calendar different things, but I am so easily distracted by email and things that I have to go paper. So I, I can't show you my list because it's, it is messy, but it does, I put, I'll tell you, I put three days on each side. Okay. And I put the most important things that absolutely cannot be dropped on those days. And then once I do those, I'm allowed to do everything else. And this is why I'm so bad at emailing these days because I do not touch email Unless it's an emergency, like I'll scan, but I will not allow myself to reply until the things that have to get done, get done. And it took me a long time to realize I had to put up that boundary for myself because I can spend all day in emails. I can go back two years and find people I haven't responded to and go, this will be a fun email to get back to now. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only thing is it has to be in my face. And the, the paper is generally on top of my computer. So I see it before I even turn it on. <laughs> I have to yeah, stop true. myself. Yeah. But that's just something that I developed because of, I know my own, my own weaknesses. And for me, my work style is a little bit different. I, I do track how much time is being spent mm -hmm. on everything, but I try to work on a first in first out process. So I'm not trying to juggle stuff, trying to mm -hmm. schedule this and that it's first in first out. Everybody knows I've got a minimum five day turnaround time. Ooh, so we don't, I'm not doing this juggling thing of, well, my show goes up Wednesday. This is being dropped in my lap Monday afternoon. Mm -hmm. They know, okay, you give it to me, you'll have it five days later. Mm -hmm. And first in, first out. So if you wait until the last minute and I've got three other episodes, you're either going to wait or you're going to pay a premium to jump the line. Nice. And I, I like that. I work. I won't start until I have all the assets. Yeah. That way I'm not, I don't have four or five episodes in various states of completion waiting on various things. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to start the project, edit it through, close it up, and be able to move on to the next. And I know that's how I work. I don't know yeah. if that's going to work for you or other people, but we all f have to find the way that works best for ourselves. Yeah. One thing, uh, uh, listening to you is like one thing that I definitely need to do is increase my, uh, turnaround time. Mm. Like, uh, cause right now I say, uh, 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So, Tight. yeah, I think, yeah, I was managing to, to uh, deliver those, but uh, I, I don't know if I can keep that. So this is one thing I'll have to talk to, to the clients for sure. Yeah. No, and that's we could... easy. Go on. Oh, uh, go ahead. That's easy to sustain when you're small. Mm -hmm. But once mm -hmm. you start to get to four, yeah. five, six clients, 
that becomes very difficult because without fail, you'll have a big dry spell and then everybody will show up all at the mm -hmm. same time. And within two hours, you'll get six episodes dumped on you. Yeah. And for sure. That that adds a huge amount of stress. It does. Yeah. It does. Especially and... if it's right before a holiday. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Yeah. And in all fairness, we could probably spend the entire time talking about time management. It's such a huge, 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 I don't want to say it's just issue, but it's a huge thing to overcome when you're managing your own work. It's very different than working for somebody else. And yeah, all that kind of stuff. And there's so many different things that could happen with each episode that could be different than another episode. So you could think, I know how long this is going to take me. And then it doesn't. So. With that in mind, we're going to take a very quick break. If anybody out there wants to like do a little bit of stretching, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the community and the newsletter. And editors, feel free. I'm going to see if I can. Nope. Okay. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. And editors, you're off camera for a couple of minutes. So feel free to dance around and stretch and do all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to dance a little bit in my chair as well. So <laughs> just a quick break to let you guys know a little bit more about the Global Podcast Editors community. I mentioned a little bit at the beginning, but I want to tell you more because we're growing. We've got about 520 people on the newsletter right now, which I know is far from like a viral or anything, but it feels like a lovely, lovely community of folks all over the world. And some of those folks have opted in to support the newsletter and all of that good stuff to be a premium uh, member of the newsletter. And that supports everything that we do in the community, including these live chats and the now monthly remote meetups that we do at the end of the month. And I can grab my paper calendar here and let you know that that one is coming up on August 31st. We're having two because time zones, one at, you'll have to do a little bit of maneuvering, 9 a.m. my time in Spain and 7 p.m. my time in Spain. If you go to the Eventbrite link that I'll put in the video notes, you can see those two dates in your local time. So you don't have to do anything like that. But there's that. There's the Google group um, that, it, that I and, and Sam both mentioned earlier. And we're building on all kinds of things as we go on. I have dreams for us to have a circle group in 2023. So we're working up to that as uh, subscribers increase and, all, and, and support increases. So if you see this now or in the future and you'd like to support us, I'm going to throw the, very gently, I'm going to throw the link to the newsletter into the chat room. So you can join us on whatever level you are able to, if you want to. Okay. I think I actually did it under two minutes right now. That is record time. And we're back. Kim, are you ready for your challenge? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So what is your biggest challenge these days? So I'm going to say, you know, my biggest challenge is always the learning of the new things, right? Mm -hmm. So I just had a client come back to me and they want me to take out of their interviews, Instagram reels. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. I don't even make Instagram reels for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I did my first one as a challenge mm -hmm. in uh, June, and I, I used my chickens, so <laughs> I didn't even do it mm -hmm. myself. So I think it's going to be a challenge. It's something definitely to learn something, but I love it because I definitely think it's the wave of the mm -hmm. future, too, to kind of move that into more of a usable content. So any advice on Instagram Reels, give it to me because... I don't even know. <laughs> I have people I can think of, but I want to let the guys go first. Gentlemen, any experience with Instagram reels? Not at all. <laughs> something I'm, I'm, we're going to address in the near future, but as of yeah. right now, nothing. Chat room, help us. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> For now, I'm just trying to use Instagram because <laughs> I was yeah. off and... Uh, I, I, I'm more of a Facebook user, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm trying to adapt and understand how things are going there. Uh, okay. But, uh, I, I, I think that some um, platforms, I, I can search the names, uh, I can't remember right now, mm -hmm. but they offer templates uh, for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can use in Premiere or any 
uh, video editor you use, or even things like Canva can uh, help you out with this. But um, for starters, <laughs> what I would suggest is looking for those templates and using uh, them in your video editor uh, uh, platform. That's great, yeah. Yeah, because I can only see this growing, to be honest, mm -hmm. with uh, not only, you know, Instagram Reels, but with the excitement over TikTok, which I don't even have the app downloaded. So <laughs> <laughs> Probably the only person on the Eastern Seaboard that doesn't. But uh, yeah, so it'll be very interesting to see because I bet that's going to come more up more and more for all of us. So. For sure. Okay, so I've got two Instagram classes or oh, like great. things. So I, I help moderate in tr full transparency. I help moderate the podcraft community for the podcast host and I'll put it over in the chat room. They did a challenge a few weeks ago, Donna, one of the other moderators and, and, um, and such so, and so on. She's amazing at Instagram and she did a five day challenge in there. The, the community is completely free to join. Uh, and then you can access the challenge. It's not going on now, so there won't be as much momentum and people answering your stuff if you do it now. But she has videos in there and she walks you through how to do stuff and all kinds of things. And it's it's so good. It changed how I did Instagram as I watched this. And I'm not just saying this because I, I, I work on the community. I was legitimately went in skeptical because I'm like, all I do is post a picture and put some words, post a picture, put some words. And now I'm doing reels and stories and I kind of understand the difference between them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And stuff like that. And the second thing is Andrea Jones from Social Savvy School is, I, they're either in the middle of a cha Instagram challenge right now or they just finished it. But she does a lot with social media and her podcast that I'll put in the chat room also talks a lot about how to use Instagram. Um, so I find that her stuff is really good on that. Great. Thank you. And I yeah. do have one other resource. Mm -hmm. The future has a carousel design kit and Ooh. looking at the web page, it says it's got two hours of content activities. It shows you how to, set up templates using Keynote on Mac, if you're a Mac user, mm -hmm. to really simplify a lot of these things. There's a lot of really good content in there. Mm -hmm. And Keep the other thing is it really does come down to branding and knowing your audience. The more oh, you yeah. can know who your audience is, you'll have an easier time of knowing what content is going to best engage with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, wow. Oh, sorry. sorry. Thankfully, she's been a client a while. So I do know her audience a little bit. So that's the easier part. But yeah, I can see more and more people getting into this game. So yeah, absolutely. Here's an interesting question we just got from the chat room from Teme. Hi, um, is social media for podcast advertising or part of show or for podcast? So is it advertising or is it part of the show? Oh, it's part of the show. The one she's looking for is yeah. part of the show. Yeah, she. I'm taking it directly from the interview she's doing for. Oh, the from podcast. like the video part of the. Yeah. Interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's for promotion of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Of so that episode. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> the awkward part, my challenge, I've got two that's been sitting on a post-it on my computer uh, all day today, and I've been toggling back and forth, every pun intended. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to go with the marketing one since we've already started down a tiny marketing rabbit hole, every pun intended. Um, I wrote about it in the last newsletter a little bit, and the, the summary is I feel like I'm being pulled in a, in a I like to call it audience growth podcast editing direction. I don't like using the word marketing because that sounds like it's somebody who's not involved in the project promoting the project. And I mean it very much so like engagement from the creator to the audience. Um, my husband and I created a product and we're, we did a launch, flopped. We did a live demo last night, went great. We've gotten some orders and I'm super excited. But I've now again found myself kind of diluting Diversifying, diluting, I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but I'm, 
I feel like I might be going off in a different direction because now I have all these different ideas on what to do with that thing, but I really still want to do editing primarily. But I also hear my clients want audience growth stuff, but I don't want to test stuff out on them. So it's like, I want to like help them grow their audience as I'm editing it, but I don't ever just want to do the audience growth engagement stuff. So I, I feel like I'm trying to balance all of that out. <laughs> and so I'm kind of in idea explosion and I need help simplifying or making sense in my head so that I, like if I understand what I'm doing and I have like a, a core path, then I can make the tasks make sense. But right now I just feel like I've siloed it off and there's the audience growth part and there's the podcast editing part. And I feel like I'm just moving back and forth between the two. So well, where do you see the crossovers? Um, that for this particular tool, it's something that I'm not actually doing anything with. It's, it's mostly automated. So if my clients were interested, if any clients were interested, they could buy the tool and get the results and implement it. Like I wouldn't be doing any of the engagement or marketing stuff. So it's something I could offer them if they say, hey, do you have any tips on how to grow an audience? I could be like, hey, not only do I have an idea, I've got a product I can sell you. So I feel like it fits that need because a, a lot of the marketing stuff I see out there is very expensive and very time consuming. And this is time consuming once you get the product, but it's not very expensive. So I feel like it could make, meet that need. But I, I don't know. I'm just having... I'm like, does it make sense to include a little bit of marketing stuff in with the podcast editing when I want to be seen as primarily a podcast editor? And that's mostly what I want to do. So could you offer this as an add-on service, something you don't, you only offer to exist to podcast editing clients? Hmm. I could, but I'm boutique and I don't plan on outsourcing. So if I did that, I'd be limited to the small amount of clients that I have. Because my max is five clients. And it's, it's the kind of thing where they go through the, they, they buy the product and then they get a giant list of people they can engage with. And it takes them a while to get through the list. If they're doing it right, it takes them a while to engage with everybody on the list. So it wouldn't, for it to be a stream of income, it would need to be open to more people than just those clients because they wouldn't need more. They wouldn't need to use it that often. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I guess I'm trying you, to build the narrative in my head. <laughs> Sorry. I, do you have a newsletter for clients and past clients specifically? Not just, not just for us, but for clients specifically. No. Yeah. Okay. No, because again, it's, because I'm boutique, because I'm super small and the max that I'll ever have is five at a time, consciously, intentionally, it didn't make sense to me to have a newsletter for that. But now I'm thinking, oh gosh, for that service, I almost feel like yeah. I should have a newsletter and that that newsletter can lead into if they need an editor. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know if you're comfortable doing this but mm -hmm. um what about like uh hiring someone to um, um to apply those that uh, uh service mm -hmm. for for uh for everyone and like uh, what i'm talking is like not just selling mm -hmm. the product, but uh, I, I I forgot how how to say this, uh, but to to um, to do this mm -hmm. uh, uh, service like reaching uh, the their their listeners or mm -hmm. their. Uh, soon to be listeners and mm -hmm. doing this for them not just like okay so here's the tool you deal with it uh, but i i know you wouldn't have the time 
to do this, but uh, maybe uh, outsourcing just this task and uh, selling as a whole uh, new service or uh, uh, another mm -hmm. part of your your uh, management services. Mm. I. I would love to hire people to do a myriad of things, but I'm kind of in a low period right now. So that's not financially feasible. Um, well, what about maybe yeah. affiliate marketing then? Kind that's, of going that way. Yeah. You know, and then have people like us sell it for you. And, yeah. You know, they just would, throwing it out there. It's, it's a huge area. So. Yeah, it is. It is. I guess the biggest thing is, Oh, and it's a bummer that Laura dropped off because Laura and I had a big conversation last year about where is the, what is the best way to set up affiliate marketing for like courses or programs or things like that. And we just hit a wall of there were, there were many places and they were all super complicated. <laughs> we both just kind of went, ah, so I would, I would love to, I would love to do that. Jeremy Enns actually does that a lot for his marketing courses and it looks like it works really stinking well. Um, but he's much more methodical than I am. So I don't know. I have a few uh, personal barriers to break through with this <laughs> to to uh, not just time management wise, but to get, yeah, to get it organized, to not do it all myself. Yeah. I think that's, that's the lesson is don't take it all on and have other people do it as well. Yeah. I yeah. think this is a bit of a tricky area because mm -hmm. organic growth marketing whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it is a very time consuming thing for whoever mm -hmm. does it whether it's you offering it as a service or if it's the client doing it on their own so it's tough to find that balance especially by not outsourcing and wanting to remain a boutique mm -hmm. it's something me and my wife struggle with all the time mm -hmm. we could help we could take on a bunch of clients but we don't want to be juggling a bunch of subcontractors and mm -hmm. get into that whole thing. We want to provide that that boutique service, and we've mm -hmm. actually called ourselves that as well, and mm -hmm. very similar to you, Max, of five clients. Mm -hmm. So it's, I understand completely where your struggle is, and I wish I yeah. had an answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. a struggle we're facing too. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think having other people help me market it with financial incentive sounds great to me. I'm super happy to do that. It's just a matter of setting that up. But I think that's a really good thing to do because um, just keeping it to five clients is it's too small. It needs to hop around the world. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. that's a bad joke. It's called engage engagement bunny, so I'm doing all kinds of rabbit references, which are making me laugh. But I'm sorry, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> okay, so holy cow, we have covered. Oh, sorry, there was a there were a couple of comments that came in. Ba 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 ba. So Surf Park says, <laughs> cute name, comics, comic books. A podcast, Cerebro, does an animated TikTok, which could be used as reels using conversations from the podcast. Oh, that Ooh, sounds nice. really cool to check out. Yeah. So that might be some inspiration, Kim. Um, yeah, definitely. Wait, where did it go? Sorry, technical issue. There we go. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, nope. Oh, you can make a start list building to the meantime, yeah. make a sign up form for people that are interested, have that. We even did a round of beta testers and, and so forth and so on. And we've got a huge discount going on right now, hopefully to get folks in to get more testimonials. Uh, and the, okay. something hmm. real quick about mm -hmm. this. Yeah, uh, yeah. What about like uh, selling this as a subscription or as a, a service? So mm -hmm. maybe, from there, you could get uh, the money to, um, uh, to to hire someone and yeah. pay them based on client services I don't, or each client they get. And yeah. The, like the goal with the product was to, and we did consider that for sure, and some of the beta testers said that, but they... We are trying to make it as close to a passive income as possible. 
because it's mostly automated at this point. So we basically just want to have like track orders coming in and going out and that's it. We're, so we're trying to get to that point. But that is, and everything's an option at this point, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to justify it in my head. I feel like I'm just getting pulled over away from editing when I still have a lot more I want to do with it. So I'm just trying to balance it out because there's, there's leaning into opportunity and then there's focusing. Mm -hmm. And then can you do both at once? <laughs> I don't know. I hope that, so. That's why I actually dropped off my other two forms mm -hmm. of income earlier this year just to focus on one thing. It was just too much yeah. for my, just too much for me. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Okay. So we've covered quite a bit from diversifying income screen, income streams to time management to Instagram reels, to trying not to get too distracted by different business ventures to, and, and so much more. Um, but let's go around one more time and tell folks uh, where they can find you online. Uh, let's go clockwise this time. Kim? Sure. Yeah, thanks. So you can find me online at kpcreativemedia.com. And my social, I have Instagram up there at KP Creative Media. I'm actually on Facebook. I do have a Twitter. I'm just starting LinkedIn. So yeah, you can find me everywhere just by going to the website and all the links are there. So I love LinkedIn. It's such a quieter, nicer place right now. I'm sure that'll change, but yeah. Sam. Okay, so uh, you can find me on Instagram or uh, at podcasteditor.pro. And yeah, this is it. Uh, you can find me with my name on Facebook and all of the other uh, social media. But uh, I I'm trying to get more uh, on socials. So yeah. Fair enough. Great. And Jesse. You can find me at tansyasteraudio.com, tansyasteracademy.com, tansyaster.com, and also <laughs> LinkedIn. I'll be starting Instagram probably later this year, but for right now, LinkedIn, the website are probably the best places to find me. Yeah. And the best places to find me are stuck in the gigantic newsletter for a GPE. <laughs> All of my links and information and, and all that kind of good stuff are in there. Again, we do this event every two weeks over on the places you're watching it, and uh, which include YouTube and Facebook and wherever else I can convince StreamYard to go to. And I really appreciate everybody that showed up in the chat room today and all of you who are watching in the future. I appreciate you doing all of this. We will have timestamps on here within the next couple of days, and the podcast will come out on Monday. Ah, like Steve's Monday crew. <laughs> Thank you very much to Jesse, Sam, and Kim for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you, Steph. And thank, yeah, you. thank you. And uh, editors, hang out for a second. I'm going to uh, shut down the recording, and then I have one more thing to tell you. Uh, this is also turned into a podcast, so editors, can we all say goodbye to everybody? Audibly. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.